yours? He said, in my child, I have shock. This might be mine, this might not be mine. There's shock. In those days, it was very common. Not very common, but it happened. Where the child, instead of your child, was not your child. As the Urdu poet says, se kya kya natija nikla, samjata beta bhatija nikla. That this is the effects of the modern nudity that we see. That the sweet thought this was our son turns out to be our nephew. Turns out to be our relative. So he says this was possible. But the fact that this kitab is from Allah, impossible that we had a doubt in it. My own child, I'm not sure. But the Quran, I'm 100% sure. Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu anhu said this. وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِّنْهُمْ لَيَكْتُمُونَ الْحَقَّ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And a group of them used to hide the truth even though they knew what the truth was. الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ Haqq is from your Allah. Don't be amongst those who doubt. وَلِكُلِّمْ وِجْهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّيهَا فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَاتِ For everyone there is a direction towards where they turn. Everyone has a path. وَلِلنَّاسِ فِي مَا يَعْشَقُونَ مَذَاهِبُ Everyone has a path. Someone likes to listen and likes to sit in lectures. Someone likes to read their own Qur'an. Someone likes to do dua. Someone likes to do tasbih. Someone likes to pray salah. Someone likes to read. Everyone is different. You know, I, I, I'm a very strong uh, uh, believer that in the community we should provide different types of events. Some people, unka dil They like to listen and learn. Some people don't like to learn. But if you tell them, brother, sister, we need someone help to serve the food, they'll be there for six hours. This is also a path to Allah. That is also khidmah. Doing, we have to break the stereotype that the only way to Allah is either listening to a lecture. Today that's the only way. I have a lecture on, mashallah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the path to Allah. No, that's not the only way. If you're listening and you don't have amal, you better not even listen. You might as well do other khidmat and other things that will soften your heart. So when you do listen, it has an effect on your heart. You might as well do other aspects. But, وَلِلنَّاسِ فِي مَا يَعْشَقُونَ مَذَاهِبُ What does Allah say? فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ Regardless, excels towards good deeds. أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يَأْتِ بِكُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا Regardless of where you are, Allah can bring everyone together. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Allah has the power over everything. وَمِنْ حَيْثُ قَرَجَتَ فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Wherever you have come out from, turn towards Ka'ba for, for your qibla. وَإِنَّهُ لَلْحَقُ مِنْ رَبِّكَ This is the truth from your Allah. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِنِ نَعْمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah isn't unaware of your actions. He tells you over and over again. There's only two, two situations a human can be in. Either they can be in the situation of ghafla, or they can be in the uh, uh, situation of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either you are ghafil of Allah, or you are mindful of Allah. There's only two possibilities. Either my mind is thinking of Allah, or it is ghafil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, you may become ghafil of me, but I'm never ghafil of you. Imagine a mother tells her child, Beta, sometimes you may forget me, but I'm always thinking about you. Uh, that's what Allah says, Allah You may forget me, but I'm always thinking about you. You always, I know what you're doing, where you are, how everything... I keep my tag, I make sure you're okay. وَحَيْتُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرًا لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَيْكُمْ حَجَّةً So that there is no dhaleel for people against you. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ Besides those who oppress. فَلَا تَفْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي Don't fear anyone, only fear Allah. وَلِأُتِمَّ نِعْمَتِي عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ so that I may complete my nirmat upon you and that you may be on hidayah. فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا So that we can send a Nabi upon you. What's the purpose of the Nabi? Four things. يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا Recite the verses. وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ Clean the inner selves from hatred, jealousy, animosity, pride, love of dunya, love of wealth. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ Tafsir of the Qur'an. Just knowing the translation is an enough. وَالْحِكْمَةَ And the wisdom. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ And to teach you things you don't know. 
Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. Come towards me one step, I will come towards you. Walking. Come towards me walking, I'll come towards you running. Come towards me a hand span, uh, a hand's width, and I'll come towards you an arm's length. Come towards me an arm's length, and I'll come towards you two arms length. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ بِالْفَرَائِذِ That a person, how do you become the friend of Allah? The Prophet ﷺ says, the first step is, be habitual on your faraiz. Don't miss the fard. In Ramadan, we're all there for Taraweeh. When our Fajr is missing, our Dhuhr is missing, our Asr is missing. But Taraweeh, mashallah, 20 rakats. How much is Dhuhr? Oh, no, Dhuhr I missed. Right, Taraweeh is nothing. Dhuhr is far. And we've created a culture where we are more, a Muslim is more pious in Ramadan if they're there for Taraweeh. But we don't care about the one who comes for all other five Salahs in Jama'ah. It is better to come to Salah, five Salahs in Jama'ah than to focus on the Taraweeh. I'm not saying don't focus on the Taraweeh. But it's priorities. This isn't enough. The Asal is Jama'ah. The Asal is the Faraid. Those are the Asal. Taraweeh is just an extra to help you. It's not the purpose. The Prophet said a person prays the Faraid. Once they're habitual in the Faraid, and then they start praying Nawafi. So once they start praying faraid and nawafil, they become close to Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي أَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُغْصِرُ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُغْصِرُ بِهَا وَيَدَهُ الَّذِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when a person becomes close to Allah, then their sight, their eyesight, their hearing, their hands, everything, is under the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the hadith of Qudsi. The Prophet sallallahu says, become Allah and all of your affairs will become yours. Uske banja or sabchi samari banjayi. Become his and everything is yours. Don't become his and nothing will be yours. You can't have it. It's his. It belongs to him. So if you want it, you have to go to him. You have to become his. G. Amongst other things as well. Whatever our need and talab is, understand that everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah, inna Allah ma'as sabirin. O you who believe, is sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. How do you have patience? How do you, how do you become a strong rock? And how do, you, how do you stay strong even though ahwal around you are changing and difficulties come? Two things, sabr. Compose yourself. For a second, take a deep breath and understand this will pass. This isn't forever. This is an Arabic poem, by the way. This is not Quran. This is Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi poem. وطب نفسا إذا حكم القضاء ولا تجزع لحادثة الليالي فما لحوادث الدنيا بقاء وكن رجلا على الأهوال جلدا وشيمتك السماحة والوفاء وإن كثرت عيوبك في البرايا تتكر بالسخاء فكل عيب يغطيه كما قيل السخاء Imam Shafi'i رحمه الله عليه says let the days go by because one day this difficult day will become nice Night, and a time will come where the pain of it won't be in your sight. Let this day go by. Let the day, time will heal itself. Have patience, persevere. And when you want to talk to someone about your problems, istarinu bisabri was Allah. You know what we love? Dil bahlani ke liye. Sometimes you go to tell someone, talk to someone. The reality is, can they do something? They have no power. Comfort yourself, talk to other people. But don't forget to talk to Allah. Talk to Him first. My father tells me, the solution to everything is turaqas. Any problem, first turaqas. Talk to Him first. Once you're done talking to Him, then talk to anybody else. Because once you're done talking to Him, He will make ways for you. you will put khair in the other conversations you have. But if you don't talk to Him, you're talking to other people, and then you're going talking to Him. Talk to Him first. Ista'inu bis sabri wa two things. إن الله مع الصابرين 
And what better thing to know is that if there is no one with you, with a sovereign person, Allah is with you. Those children in Sham and Palestine and, and Iraq and Afghanistan and Kashmir and Burma. Oh, 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 oh. Where those children have Allah with them. There are more awliya they are there than there are in our communities. These are sabir people. And we think we've done a favor by giving some donation or helping them out or supporting them. All you've done is, you know when someone is, uh, uh, you know how they have these candidates running? And then people want to give donations. Why do they want to give donations? So they don't even say, you know, I supported this candidate. I'm part of it and get some of the connection that this candidate has. The same way our support is this candidate is with Allah. And then we want to put something inside just so we can be linked with this person. So with this individual, we're also raised. And definitely they have Allah with them. The ahwal and the things that they go through. Today we don't have any shukr in our life. A little bit of difficulty comes and we think that Allah has abandoned us. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقَتَّلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاد Anyone who dies in the path of Allah, don't call them a dead person. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ But they are alive, but you don't know. There are two things about this ayah. There are two predominant opinions. One thing is for sure, is that in, after you leave this dunya, and before you get to the akhirah, you have a buffer zone. What is this buffer zone called? Barzakh. It's a different realm. adab e and all of that stuff happens in Barzakh. It doesn't happen in that physical grave that you see over there. The soul is transported to the Barzakh, it happens in the Barzakh. Otherwise, if a person dies in an explosion or a lion eats somebody, where's the adab of qabr happening in the stomach of the lion? No. So this is in the barzah. There's a difference of opinion. Are the bodies disintegrated or not? A lot of scholars say that the bodies of shaheed and anbiya do not disintegrate. They remain intact. And there is a hadith for that. One is this ayah over here. And what is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Inna Allah harrama ala al-ardi adasadu al-anbiya That Allah has made in haram on the earth to eat the bodies of the anbiya. Now, this raises a question. The hayat that the anbiya have, do they have it while they're in that particular grave? Or is it a hayat of barzah that they have? There are both opinions in this regard. Majority of the Salafi perspective on this is that the Prophet is alive in Barza. However, what is the difference between the Prophet's Jannah and my Jannah? They will respond and say that this one is higher quality and this one is lower quality. That's the response. Other groups of people, they say that the Prophet is alive in his capacity. Allah knows how he is, we don't know. Whether it's Barzaqi, completely Barzaqi, a part of dunya, we, how it is, we don't know, but it is different. Because Allah says, Bal ahya. Allah says, Wala taqulu li man yuqatal fi sabi lama. Don't call them mayyit. Bal ahya. This is what Allah SWT tells us. Wala kin la tash'urun. You don't understand. My re- advice to you is, regardless of what perspective you take, don't argue with the next person. Take your perspective, jazakallah khair, and keep it to yourself. Leave the argument and the debating among scholars. Don't get involved into these things. This thing doesn't bring any benefit. They say in Urdu or Farsi, Neem Hakim Khatra Jan, Neem Mullah, Khatra Iman. Half a doctor is a threat to your life. Half a scholar is a threat to your Iman. And today we have all of these half scholars, quarter scholars, 10% scholars running around everywhere. I got a hijaza this weekend. I took one hour hadith course and mashallah, I have hijaza now. And you know when we were graduating from the Mufti program, our teacher didn't give us certificates. He used to tell us, if you are a Mufti, you don't need the certificate. And if you are not a Mufti, then the certificate is not going to make you one. The Kamal has to be from inside you. Did you hear Shabbat So, 
what it means by not, don't call them dead doesn't mean that you can't say this person has passed away. But the idea and the concept that their death is like everyone else's death. Meaning that they, their bodies disintegrate and all those things. No, we say that no, Allah has given them a preservation. How Allah has given it, Allah knows. But there are many incidences of different scholars in Sahaba and Amdiya whose bodies were formed and they were not disintegrated. Many incidences. Um, it comes about Daniel alayhi salam. Daniel alayhi salam is buried in Sham. It says that Amir Taymur took him and buried him in Samarkand afterwards. Samarkand is in Uzbekistan, close to Russia. So one opinion is, is that his body was transported, obviously, and there are narrations, all by their weak, the weak narrations, but there are narrations that Daniel alayhi salam's body was discovered in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu, and he hadn't aged at all. There's also an incident, you can check it online, this happened in the 1940s or 50s, 50s I think it happened, that there were two Sahaba by the Euphrates, when the Euphrates River was uh, being uh, overflown, two Sahaba, Jabir radiallahu anhu, and the second one is slipping my mind, one was Jabir ibn Abdullah I believe, uh, they came in a dream of a person, they said, look, our graves are about to get uh, uh, under, this, under this water, uh, relocate the graves into a more sturdy area. So the King Faisal of Iraq that time, this is probably I think the 1930s. Masjid to bana di shabbar mein iman ke hararat walo ne man apna purana paapi hai varsum mein namazi ban na saka kya khub amir Faisal ko salusi ne pegam diya to naam mo nasab ka hijazi hai par man ka hijazi ban na saka this amir Faisal here was the first king of Iraq. This person, first king of Iraq, he is the son of Sharif Hussain. Sharif Hussain was the person who was uh, the governor or the caretaker of Mecca. So for 800 years, 700 or 800 years, the Ottoman Empire, they existed for about 450 years and before them, Banu Abbas and so on and so forth. But the point is, is that Mecca and Medina were generally operated separate from the kingdom. The, Sanus, the uh, Sharif Hussein, what he did was that he had made an alliance with the British to overthrow the Ottomans. And the Saud, also the same thing. There were two people. The British made an alliance with two groups of people. Sharif Hussein's deal was, was that once the Ottomans are overthrown, we are to become the Khalifa of the entire Muslim dynasty. This was at the time of World War I. Sharif Hussein came from the Nasab of the Prophet Everyone who took care of Makkah and Medina had to be from the lineage of the Prophet. Sharif Hussein's son Faisal, he was the first king of Iraq, right in Switzerland. He was he rebelled against the Ottoman Empire and he also did some actions that were not uh, of uh, of a person's dignified character that he should have done. Anyway, Amir Faisal was in Iraq, he was the first president of Iraq, the British went back on their word, they didn't give Sharif Hussein the Khilafah, they pushed him to Jordan, and the present king of Jordan is I believe the grandson or great grandson of Sharif Hussein, great grandson I think, of Sharif Hussein. So Lawrence of Arabia was there at the same time, but he was with the Saud. Yes, but he was more, so his main focus, Lawrence of Arabia was so talented, that they say that he knew the Arabic lehjas of every tribe. He could speak better Arabic than the Arabs themselves. That's how talented he was. And uh, though he did what he did, there was another person by the name of Umar Mukhtar. The line of? Line of the desert. He was from Libya. He was from the Sanusi dynasty. And obviously Libyans are black. And so I give a whole lecture on, on, on the life of Umar Mukhtar and all of these things a while back. But the point is, is that in our Lama Iqbal's famous poem, you, ju- you all generally hear, Majjid to Banadi, Shabbar Me, Imam Ki Hararat, Balo Ne, but you don't hear the rest of the poem. The rest of the poem is very thought provoking. The next line is, Ya Khub Amir Faisal Ku, Sanusi Ne Pegam Diya. Sanusi is this Umar Mukhtar, this Libyan. And Faisal is who? From the lineage of the Prophet Sarasana. But he backstabbed the Ummah. So what does uh, uh, Sanusi say to Amir Faisal? Yaqub Amir Faisal ko Sanusi ne pegham diya tu naam munasab ka hijazi hai par man ka hijazi ban na saka par dil ka hijazi ban na saka Amir Faisal through you 
flows the blood of Muhammadur Rasulullah, but your heart doesn't beat the beat of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi You may have his blood, but you don't have his spirit. تو نام منصف کا حجازی ہے پر دل کا حجازی بن نہ سکا you couldn't become a spirited حجازی anyway so I mean if Aslan said that when people come back from Hajj then lift uh, this Iraqi president he said that uh, and this is different from King Faisal who I mentioned earlier who was Sa'ud uh, who was Abdul Aziz's son so Amir Faisal says that when the people come back from Hajj then excavate the bodies and there is you find this online the story online everywhere uh, Allah knows how true it is um, and uh, they say that people witnessed the, the, uh, the Sahaba's bodies being excavated and it is said that there was a scientist who became Muslim uh, after looking at the eyes of the Sahaba saying that their eyes have the same glitter as a live person does. And Allah knows how true the incident is, I'm just relating this to you. I heard this in South Africa from one of my teachers who has no connection to any internet or anything else. He read it in a book somewhere and uh, later on when I checked online, it was, the story was also online. No, no, I, I, even in, in Jannat al-Baqir, for those who know Jannat al-Baqir has been a graveyard for the past 14 centuries. So what they do is, is that they rebury bodies in Jannat al-Baqir. So what they do is they'll open a grave and the bones that are there, they'll take the bones and they'll bury them elsewhere and they'll bury another body inside there. However, if they open a grave and the body hasn't disintegrated, they close the grave and they mark the grave, they don't open this again. This has happened to a lot of people as well in stories and we can carry on the whole evening thing, the stories. Yeah. The Prophet Sallallahu there are different calibers of shaheed as well. One is the asl shaheed and then one is the one who dies in a car accident, the wall falls on them, or this, or dies in a sickness, or this and that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said they're also considered shaheed. Obviously, the, this, this is for the specific shaheed and not for general shaheed. But um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said that if uh, whoever desires shahada with the truth of their heart, they will get the reward of shahada even if they die on their bed. This is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Whoever desires it from the depth of their heart, then they will get it even if they die on their, uh, their bed. Their ghusl isn't done. Jalal Salaam 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 ghusl isn't done. Because remember in the hadith of uh, Uhud, the Prophet ﷺ would have them buried and then pray janaz on them and then the next... And he prayed on Hamzah for over 70 times, over and over and over again. It was Muslim. Yeah, because their, their blood and these things is witness. Day of judgment. Even with the Muhrimin and these things, a lot of them in Hajj and stuff, they don't take their ihram off. They bury them just like that with their ihram on. That they will rise up doing talbiyah. There's a dua that you make to have a good death. And inshallah, if you read this dua, is it 25 times or 30 times? My father told me this. Let me pull the dua out.
can't find it, but the dua is Allahumma barik li fil maut wa fi ma ba'd al maut. Oh Allah, bless me in death and after death as well. Uh, the, the, did someone ask a question right now? No, right? Okay. Uh, then inshallah, well, just remind me to respond. Uh, I, I think tomorrow we can have some mics or something because there's sisters upstairs that can't hear. That uh, just message right now saying that they need someone. What's tomorrow? Oh no, not tomorrow. Monday. The dua is Allahumma barik li fil maut wa fi ma ba'd al maut. Allah bless me in my death and after my death as well. وَلَنَبَلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Allah says, وَلَنَبَلُوَنَّكُمْ We will test you بِشَيْءٍ with a little bit من الخوف of fear والجوعي and hunger وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ and a little bit of your money will get touched too. وَالْأَنفُسِ You will lose some friends. وَالثَّمَرَاتِ and your food and sustenance and your grains and there will be difficulties, climate change. Allah says, I will test you. The test is coming regardless. You only have one solution. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Give Bashara, give glad tidings to the Sabirin. Who are the Sabirin? That when they get a Musibah, they say, Inna lillah, we were Allah's, wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And we will go back to Allah, and our Allah will give us better than what He has taken from us, and Allah will grant us better. One scholar once told me that if you have a, if you lose something, or you have a nuqsan, uh, uh, car accident, this or that, Recite inna lillahi wa nalihi rajirun seven times immediately and insha'Allah bi iznillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you something better than that. I've seen it work and may Allah make it for anyone else and at the same time if you ever lose anything GG If you lose anything the dua to find it is inna lillahi wa nalihi rajirun That's the dua Unless it's been stolen. Yeah. May Allah SWT make you find it, inshallah. We, we sometimes say as jokes, you know, ulama have their own set of jokes. Scholars have their own set of jokes. Academic jokes, this and that, and they have their own capacity. One joke, almost all of if a person says something silly, especially students, you joke around with students because like, you have muhabba with them, right? You're like a father to them, so you joke around with your students. So when I, inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa He said, why? Because I think you lost your senses. They have rahmat and blessings from their Allah upon them. Salah can mean dua, it can mean rahmah, it can mean the ibadah, it has multiple meanings. Over here, salah means blessings. Man salla alayya wahidatan sallallahu alayhi ashra. The Prophet says, the one who does one durood on me, Allah sends ten salawat on him, ten rahmah on him, ten blessings on him. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And they are those who are rightly guided. إِنَّ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَائِهِ اللَّهِ فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ أَوْ اِعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَّوَّفَ بِهِمَا وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Safa and Marwa are two heavenly mountains. Safa is a mountain that the Prophet ﷺ began the call of Nabuwa from. You go here in Umrah. The Prophet ﷺ says, Safa and Marwa are from the signs of Allah. Whosoever goes to Kaaba or does Umrah, then if there's nothing wrong with them to tawwafa bihima, to go between Safa and Marwa. وَمَنْ تَتَوَّعَ خَيْرًا Whoever does Nafil, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is appreciative of the actions of people. There used to be two idols on top of Safa and Marwa.
these two, boy, this man and this girl, they were in an illicit relationship and they wanted to commit zina. And they could find no place to commit zina, so they went inside the Kaaba and committed zina. And when they committed zina inside the Kaaba, Allah turned them into stone. One of their name was Naila. The second was named, I'm just slipping my mind. The girl's name was Naila. No, that's fine. Just because one Khabis was Naila doesn't mean all Khabis are Naila. Uh, otherwise, you cannot name your children Altaf or Hussein. I had a Bangladeshi brother that met me the other day. And uh, obviously, I am very bad at remembering names. Very bad. Alhamdulillah, blessed with a good memory in all other things. Names, I can't remember them at all. There are some students of mine for like six months straight, I ask them their name. It's just a weakness of mine. But faces, I don't forget. If I see your face, I'll remember it. And uh, he met me outside of the masjid yesterday. And he said, brother, you will not forget my name. And I said, why, what's your name? He said, my name is Al-Taf Hussein. Now, Keep this in mind, that when I think of Al-Taf Hussein, the first thing I think of is a printing company. There's an Islamic book, Niyal Taf Saab, who we know, Al-Taf Bar Khurdariya. He's not even Hussein, he's Bar Khurdariya, right? But when I think of Al-Taf, that's the first thing that rings to my mind. So I'm there, and I'm, and I'm smiling, and I'm like, okay, he's talking about the kitab, mashallah, blessed, this and that. And the brother next to me is laughing. And then I got it after a second, I was like, oh, he's talking about the other Al-Taf Hussein. Name your children either out of the names of Allah or the names of Anbiya or give them good names. It doesn't have to be uh, a name that is popular. It could be anything. And for God's sake, please don't ask the Imam to give your child a name that nobody has named their child before. One time a friend calls. Yes. One time a friend called the sheikh and he said, Sheikh, Sheikh, at 3 a.m. in the morning, Sheikh, Sheikh, I just had a boy. Can you give me a name that nobody has named their child? And I want to name my child that. The sheikh said, name him either Shaitan or Firaun. And he said, Sheikh, how can you say that? He said, who else is going to wake you by 3 a.m.? You, you couldn't wait till the morning? Everyone has this habit. I want a name that no one has named. I take Shaitan. No one is taking that name. Firaun, no one is taking it. There was one... Anyone Patan over here? For you? I'm also Patan, so I can say some Patan jokes. They once had a Patan brother, they said, listen, write a tafsir of the Qur'an, tarjima of the Qur'an. The, the scholar wrote the tafsir and the tarjima. And he said to the brother, he said, look, just copy it, don't add anything, don't subtract anything. Exactly how I wrote it. I need you to copy it so, for the printing press. He said, yeah, okay, that's fine. He said, don't change anything. He said, I won't change anything. Nothing, said, nothing. I won't change anything. Said, okay. A few weeks later, he comes back. Is my work done? He said, yeah, but your work is done. He said, did you change anything? He said, nope, I didn't change anything. Nope. He said, but, wherever in the Quran, shaitan was mentioned, I put your name there instead. And wherever khinzir was, I put your dad's name in there. So in that way, at least your name is in the Quran. And he said, Right, this was not the right way. And then someone went to uh, how do you say donkey in uh, Urdu? Not gada. There's another word for it. Khachar is a mule. This is. Um, There you go. It was on this word. That was good. The Fasihi word. Khar is also a, a donkey. So in the Quran it comes Wakharra Musa Sa'iqa. And Musa Islam fell to the ground after seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sajalli. So the guy said, No, 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 no. What do you mean Musa? Musa never had a khar. Isa Islam did. So he changed Musa Islam's name to Isa Islam. Ah, these people it happens. People change this and that. If you, a lot of the books that are printed nowadays, 
especially good printing is done in Beirut, in Lebanon. And a lot of them are Shia there. So whenever you have a book of Sahabi or something, of, of, of Hussein radiallahu anhu or Ali radiallahu anhu, they'll put alayhi salam or imam or this and that around it. Um, and people get confused when they're reading. But if you know the history and the fact that people who type, there's an itch, you want to add something to it. You have to, you can't just put it the same way it's done. It's, it's just an itch. Anyway. وَمَنْ تَتَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ They committed zina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so the Quraysh, they put one of the idols on top of Safa and one idol on top of Marwa. And they would go and they would touch the idols when they would do Umrah. So then when the Muslims came, now they felt weird that there's idols on Safa and Marwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِ أَيَّ الطَّبَابِ There's nothing wrong. Go do Umrah. Don't touch that idol. I, I, I will check it up and, and, and let you know. Naila was the girl's name. So for me, what I do for the most part is with the tafasir that I read, there's no way possible to read half a juz of tafasir in about 10 tafasir. So what I do is I just read through different tafasir and read and just read and read. And read. My habit is just reading. And then from there, there's elements and stuff that come to my mind. And some of these points that I mentioned, I, I last read them or spoke of them when I was a student. So at least a good 14, 15 years ago. So at that time, then recollecting that parts of the memory remain and things. So this is one of the things, Naila, I remember one of the Ustads told us. And uh, it's, it slipped my mind, but I'll find out, inshallah. Okay. Do dua that Allah comes for barakat in it. Otherwise, this is, it's, it's, it's. It's our sins that make our memory weaker. Uh, we'll stop over here. Anyone has any questions? They can ask, inshallah, for the next few minutes. So, how the the question of the uh, of the brother was? How do you how do you what differentiates a juz? Then how did why are there thirty juz and Surah Baqarah is in the middle of three juz? Um, so why is it like that? The what was done is that the Quran is. Uh, the Quran is 6,236 verses, give or take. And in the time of the Sahaba, they divided the whole Quran into a 30-day regiment. That a person can finish the Quran equally if they read an equal amount of it once a, a once, one, for one just a day, they'll finish in a month. So that's how they differentiate. This wasn't done in the time of the Prophet. That's number one. Number two. The surahs were differentiated in the time of Rasulullah The order of the surah was done from the Prophet Number three, the size of the page. Does the page end with an ayah? Does it not end with an ayah? This all has to do with memorization. There, there are predominantly two popular Qur'ans. There are many other, but there are predominantly two popular Qur'an. One is with 15 lines, which ends with an ayah. And one is with 13 lines, which doesn't end with an ayah. The one with the 15 lines, the purpose of it is so that you know, okay, 20 rakat, 20 pages, each rakat, one page. You have that bro- a breakdown, right? At the same time, it's easier to memorize when you know when it ends on the page. The second group, the 13 juz one, that has no set amount. For them, when, you, when you're memorizing the Quran and you end on a page, and you have to think about what's on the next page, it's tough. So that Quran has no end, no, like 99%, no ayah ends with the, uh, on the end of the page. Because it carries on to the next page. So you don't have a memory issue of remembering what is the next page, where does it start from. Does that make sense? The third thing are the rukus in the Quran. The rukus in the Quran have also been placed in a way, there is no historicity to them, but they capture topics. They capture an entire topic, like an entire uh, genre. Or a section, right? You know how the Quran changes its aspects? So it captures a topic. If you read one ruku in each rakat, you will finish on the 27th night of Ramadan. The last thing is called the seven manzils. The Quran is divided into seven parts. Fami bi shawqin. The first starts at Fatiha. The second starts at Maida. The third starts at Yunus. The fourth starts at Bani Israel. The fifth starts at Surah Shura. The sixth starts at Wasafat. And the seventh starts at Surah Qaf. The, it has been put in this way because the busiest Sahabi, the one who had no time, would complete the Qur'an in one week. So a way of breaking down the Qur'an in seven days, thirty days, and all that capacity, that's why it's there.
There is a difference between, the question is, is that I said yesterday, and also uh, I sometimes get a chance to just play some of the recording. I realize that there's a lot of stories I'm not finishing. I'm saying a thing and then I get off on track, on track, off track, off track, and I'm so off track that I'm not, I don't even go back. And I was listening to one story yesterday. I went off track explaining another story, which I went off track and neither finished that story or the one before it. And I thought back and I said, no one stopped me and no one reminded me and said, you left that story of Arfaq radiallahu anhu and, and all of that. And then after that, there was another story and I forgot. So please do stop me and, 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 and remind me if I forget something. The difference is, is that there's a difference between a mistake and a sin. A sin is something a person does knowing its impermissibility and that it is wrong and they do it as a desire and their will. For example, someone breaks the masjid. Is it a sin or not? What if I accidentally revert into the masjid? Do you understand? It's the perception of it, of where do you see it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks about Musa alayhi salam, He did it by accident. Yunus alayhi salam left it. He le- you see, the Nabis, there's something in Arabic called Hasanat al Abrar Sayyat al Muqarrabin. What is considered normally okay for general public, it is looked down upon for the elite. So, for example, for a normal person, is there anything wrong if that person, uh, they shouldn't laugh out loud, if a person laughs out loud or is joking and this and that, is there anything wrong with it? Nothing really wrong. But now if you see an imam or a sheikh or something just laughing and this and that, it, it doesn't seem normal, right? It doesn't seem okay. Now if a person, mashallah, if you are driving a Ferrari or something, someone will come and say, mashallah. If the imam is driving a Ferrari, they'll say, astaghfirullah. Right or wrong? The only time the Qari can be Qari Ferrari is in Tarawi. You have Qari Ferrari Tarawi. So this is called Hasanatul Abrar Sayyat al Muqarrabin. What is generally okay for others is not okay for the elite because they have higher standards. So Yunus Islam should not have left Nineveh without the explicit order of Allah. Wasn't a sin? Mistake. Nuh Islam did the dua for a child? Misunderstood. Mistake. Uh, Musa alayhi salam slapped the guy, he died accidentally. Adam alayhi salam ate the fruit. What does Allah say? وَلَمْ نَجِدْ مِنْهُ عَزْمًا We didn't find in him a, 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 a principal decision to do it. But it was a mistake that he made. وَلَمْ نَجِدْ مِنْهُ عَزْمًا It was an accident. He slipped. He didn't realize. You know, you tell yourself, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. And then you forget that. The question is, why is Salah before Salah? The reason is, is because a person has to compose themselves. Salah, there are times for Salah, you may need to do wudu, you may need to have appropriate clothes, find the qibla, pray Salah. Salah doesn't happen immediately. Sabr happens immediately. Sabr has to be an immediate reaction. If you have Sabr, then you can pray Salah. But if you don't have Sabr, neither will you do Salah, neither will you do anything else. So the first thing Allah reminds you is take it easy. Anything happens, just take a deep breath. Allow to understand the reality of everything. And then turn towards me. Because if Allah says, turn towards me, you're still disenfranchised. You're still all over the place. So Allah reminds you, take control of yourself, compose of yourself, and then turn towards me. Because Salah can't always happen immediately. You're sitting in a car. You get into an argument with someone. And I'll give you a trick to say, Allah, what, but inspect your Salah. But the thing is, is that what if you don't have wudu? Then you're stuck. But you can always have Salah. And then sometimes the Imam Salah is long. You need sabr for that. Salah has to precede it. It is the seed that grows into Salah. Anyone else? Yes, sister. The question is, if the Imam is reading Surah Fatiha, do you also recite it? This is a fifty difference. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, you don't recite Surah Fatiha in Jahri Salahs, which is loud Salahs. In, in Salahs where the Imam's recitation is audible. 
Uh, however, do you recite it in the rakats that the imam is silly, not audible, uh, or in the prayers that are completely inaudible? There are two opinions. The prior ahnaf, the, the previous ahnaf of the uh, past century, they were the opinion that you don't recite Surah Fatiha regardless. However, there are a growing uh, a group, and my also perspective on it is as well, that in Sirri Salahs, in quiet Salahs, recite your Surah Fatiha. Like Dhuhr and Asr or the last two rakats recite Surah Fatiha, that's it, not a Surah. Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi also writes in Kitab al Um that you should not recite Surah Fatiha while the Imam is reciting loudly, even though the fatwa of the Shafi Mazhab is not on that opinion. Though Imam Shafi'i said that the fatwa is not on it, those who call the Shafi'i fifth, to them, they recite Surah Fatiha between the Ameen and the beginning of the Surah. They do it between that. If the Imam is reading loudly, according to Imam Hanifa, Imam Shafi'i says you will. So the question is, is that I join the Imam in the second rakat, basically the third rakat, okay? And I pray the third and the fourth rakat with them. When I make up my two rakats, how do I make them up? The two rakats you make up, you make them up as if they're your first two rakats. Because you haven't done two qiraat. You have to do two qiraat. I mean, surah fatiha and a surah. So you will do them in the next and the next rakat. At-tahiyyat, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashadu wa rahmatullahi wa rasulullah. You won't read anything beyond that. No. You will say salamu alaikum. Uh, you won't say salamu alaikum. When the Imam says both his salams, you will get up, complete your two rakats. You will do surah, fatiha, and surah. Fatiha and surah. Because you've missed them. You haven't done them. No, no, no. So, regardless, whenever you miss a rakat, you will always do tashahud. And ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, you will stop. No tasbih. Regardless of how many you've missed. If you missed one, you after the Imam Salam, not your Salam, after the Imam Salam, you will get up and you will complete your one rakat as if it was your first rakat. Okay. Any other questions? No? Last one, inshallah. Uh, one more question, inshallah. The Muslims are already here. Most of them, inshallah. Go ahead. Yes. But you get half the reward if you sit and pray nothing. Yes. Inshallah, Jazakallah khair. See you all on Monday, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Next week will be Ramadan, right? Oh, mashallah. Talk to the committee people in this and Inshallah. I'm okay anytime. Inshallah. If, if they want to, I'm, I'm okay with that, Inshallah. But probably not from this week, though. Sounds about. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.